like to call us to order and do a roll call. Mom, is, mom we're going to we're going to start the meeting. Okay. No, mom, mom, we're going to start the meeting. Okay. We're starting the the township meeting. Okay. I have to do that. So, so uh, good evening. Supervisor Goldberg. Yes, here. <laughs> Trustee Robbins. Here. Trustee Thomas. Here. Trustee Eisenberg. Here. And Trustee Moger. Here. Uh, Assessor Churchwell. Is Jan on with us tonight? I don't uh, see her. No. Okay. Uh, Administrator Ty. She's showing up on the screen, but I'm not seeing her, hearing her right now. Uh, could be in the vicinity of a computer, but I don't know. When she comes on, then we'll. And uh, Deputy Clerk Forrester? Here. Yay. <laughs> and uh, Director McCall? Yes, sir. Mr. Supervisor, we do have a quorum for this. All right. Then we will. Oy. Do the pledge. I do have a larger flag than we normally use. So we'll rise and do the Pledge of Allegiance. <laughs> Hold it where it can be visible. Okay. I pledge allegiance. Allegiance I, to the flag of the United States, United States, States of America. America. And, and to, to the republic, republic for which it stands. One nation mm -hmm. under God. One nation. Under God, indivisible, with liberty, with liberty and justice, and justice for, all. for all. Thank you. Uh, uh, first, okay, Diane, do we have you now? Are you there? Can you hear me? Uh, he's otherwise occupied. Um, okay. Do we have anyone who would like to move to approve the minutes? Oh. Mr. Supervisor, ah. I have to extend a sincere apology. This is just uh, without giving explanation, it, it's just for, for it's health, okay. professional reasons. And I'm embarrassed because in 11 years as clerk, Sandy and I take a tremendous amount of pride. We listen to the things, but but it's not. It's it's. I just want it, to. It is or it isn't okay, but we can't do anything about it. So yeah, we'll, and I, but I do feel you should know that it's it's not the way it should be. And and I, no stuff happens, but let's uh, uh, just a bit uh, We'll deal with it uh, after we burn down your office. But for now, we'll just move on. Um, Can we post the the videos as the minutes? Is there any they are precedent both. for that? No? Well, we can't vote on it because, well, whatever. Let's, let's just move on. Uh, for, sakes, for the sake of simplicity, at least at this meeting, and Jerome, what you could research with your clerk's association, in the future, could we, as Gail was suggesting? Hello? Hi. Hi, oh. can you hear me now? We can hear you now. I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt. I couldn't get on. I couldn't get the. Okay. Sorry. You're Pardon there. Me. So that's yeah, all here. we need. Okay. Okay. Um, sorry. To find out if we could uh, substitute video for the minutes and we'll know going forward. Because our videos are posted. So. Yeah. So to find out from your clerk's association, we can do that Great. Uh, going forward. All right. Uh, so the supervisor's report. Mr. Supervisor, could I, could I make sure that if there is any uh, public, if there is any uh, resident who's online with us, if they sure. themselves and, sure. and then offer public comment just for that. That's fine. We do have a name. Is there a member of the public present? Pamela? Is there a rest of you here? Whoever it is has got their mute on. Oh, hi. I'm with the League of Women Voters in Wilmette, so I'm just observing. Um, so I do not have public comment. Okay. Right. Uh, 
Pamela? Just are, like are to make a record met? of who was here. Hi. Are you from Wilmette or just involved with the League of Women Voters from Wilmette? Because we, we usually list the resident, the, the village where you're from. Wilmette. L U R I E. Okay, do you have what you need, Jerome? Thank you, Ellen. Okay. Um, the supervisor's report will be, um, there, there have been some requests uh, of, as to how we are going to be dealing with committee meetings, uh, reopening the office, um, dealing with uh, peer jury in varying whatever we need to do to make that happen. A key ingredient of pure jury is confidentiality. So we have to make sure that whatever record keeping we do uh, does not involve names of any of the defendants involved. Or I think members of the jury for that matter, at least during the proceedings. Um, having mentioned pure jury, uh, we had the opportunity, I believe it was last Friday, to uh, give Max the award. We gave him his check and plaque, and he was most appreciative. Uh, he brought his brother and his mom, and they seemed to enjoy it as well. And he asked that I extend uh, thanks to the board, so I'm doing that. He's a very nice young man, seems to deserve the award, and uh, we'll just, ju that's just to let you know that we did that. In terms of um, reopening the office, um, oh, by the way, it, well, this will go back to, Brian very much wants to have our committee meetings done by Zoom. And that is a matter also that he uh, has shared that members of the committees are reluctant to come to the office until we have some kind of uh, sanitation certification and stuff because of COVID. And what we are in the process of doing, and I would hope that by next week we'll be in position we are upgrading our computer system so that we will have the capability of doing the meetings by Zoom from our conference room. Uh, so that Brian could be there or somebody who knows how to work all this stuff. So Jack won't have to, or we'll figure out how we're going to use our increased computer capacity that we're told by our uh, vendors uh, will meet whatever uh, capabilities we need to uh, do those meetings on Zoom. Is that correct, Diane? Yes, it is correct. Oh, I thought we lost you. Okay. No, 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 no. I, yes, that is correct. Okay. Uh, we're also having uh, installed as we speak new hardware. Our computers are very old. Um, some work, most don't. <laughs> so that is being adjusted and by the end of next week, hopefully, sometime in the, the I don't want to give an exact date, but sometime in the very near future, we'll be up and running and fully capable. Uh, in terms of reopening the office, uh, We've done a survey of our neighboring townships. In this case, it was uh, Northfield and Maine. They are not reopening yet. Uh, some of the villages are not reopening. School board offices, some are reopening, some aren't. And by reopening, I mean just having the office open for people to walk in off the street, if you will. Uh, for regular business, but without an appointment. And most of the most of the offices, at least to this point, are not at that point yet, either in terms of comfort of the staffs or uh, 
even the the, the public clientele. Um, what we we can sort of I would say with great certainty that there is nothing that we've been required to do since we didn't have the since we closed the office that we have not successfully completed in terms of public service. The only exception is issuing passports, uh, helping with the issuing of passports. And that's a function of the State Department, not us. Uh, the food pantry is fully serviced. Uh, any uh, business that the assessor's office needs to complete is done. Any of Jeannie's clients that need to be seen are being seen on a confidential basis that she works out with the clients. Um, and uh, it, for the time being, I, I don't know, we may want to leave it just that way. What, what you notice on the agenda that uh, I ask that we include a, 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 a listing for a committee of the whole meeting. And, and that will discuss whether we should have, what I thought we could do is have our corporate attorney come to the meeting and find out what procedure they recommend that we go through for reopening. I don't pretend to know. Uh, and as I mentioned to you, I talked to Winnetka and a couple of other places, nobody seems to know. And rather than do it and then have to go back and redo it. Um, I thought if we could do a committee of the whole meeting where we could discuss everything and even on the same date, move on to our board meeting uh, and vote on what procedures the attorneys suggest unless people are very uncomfortable with it, in which case we'll continue to discuss till we get very tired. Um, Uh, so uh, that that'll be up to the call of the board. I, I I don't think we're prepared. I'm not prepared to set up the procedure for how we would officially reopen. I don't know that we need to do anything. What we when we closed, we just followed uh, the edicts of the governor and the health departments and all of that. And they said, yeah, everyone has to be closed, and we were. And by closed, again, this isn't that we're not doing business. It's just that we're not open for the public to walk in. Um, am I making sense to everybody here? I do have a question on that. Um, my apologies if it looks like I'm looking up because my dual screen is messed up today. Excuse me. Huh. And um, uh, the question is, so I know that the pantry was only open for a finite period. I think it's 10 to 2. But if someone calls the office at three o'clock, is someone picking up the phone? Yes, yes. Okay. But the pantry itself, after I think it's two or two thirty, they can't come in and get food that day, but they could come and get it the next day. But somebody would be here or be at the office to instruct that. Uh, pantry services are it's fully served. It, it, before we went into the pandemic, people could call and come in the next day for the pantry either. They need, people need to make an appointment to come in and that was done for privacy sake. So the, right, I'm not as concerned about the pantry because I think we have a process, but the question is um, how, you know, if someone's calling to be screened, then what's going on? You know, so I just want to make sure that, you know, for, until five o'clock, there's somebody there doing yeah, certain they things. are. And they would do the same screening that they would have done, it may be on the phone. Jeannie would be available or Brian to take them through the same process that they would have in any event. And we're not just saying, oh, come on in, pick up some food. We're, or don't come in, we don't want to talk to you. That's not what's going on. Yeah, the staff is here and able to serve people um, just as they were before. 
Right. Uh, and if anything, Ellen. they may be getting better service, faster service, and, and clearly, and, and I think more efficient service than they were before. Um, but they are being served. Uh, and as I mentioned, the only service that I'm aware of that isn't being handled the way it was before is passport. And that's because of the State Department. We're not allowed to. Ah, Jan, hi. Um, Hello. Alan, I would suggest I get involved in these Zoom board meetings uh, three or four times a month. Yeah. There's a little thing down at the bottom that says reactions. And when somebody wants to speak, if they stick a hand up like that, the chairs, uh, rather than just bursting in, uh, if the chair recognizes somebody, it makes life a lot easier. Okay. Uh, I would also like to mention it would be a lot nicer if some of the reports that we're supposed to be discussing would not just appear as if by magic in the afternoon of the day of the meeting. I was in the dentist chair all afternoon, fortunately nothing bad, but I got home and as soon as I switched on my computer, I don't have time to read things in seven minutes. So I won't be able to take part in any financial discussions or some of the other things. It's a little irritating to get stuff in the afternoon when we're supposed to discuss it in the evening. Thank you. Well, some of that, not all, but some of that is uh, in following the national news. The post office isn't as efficient it was, we put it in the mail in such a time that you should have received it earlier. I believe he's referring to the email. Is that correct, John, that I sent this uh, afternoon? Oh, I don't know about emails. I'm talking yes. about- Yes, so you're correct, Diane. The, the packet okay. that we mail, uh, we got put all it in that. the post in time that it should have- Yeah, I got it Monday or- I made a note of that, John. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Okay, so I apologize that you had a problem, but uh, hope it doesn't happen again. We'll we'll try and make certain it doesn't happen again. Okay. Um, so I guess what question I'm going to raise as part of the supervisor's report is in terms of procedure for reopening the office. Do you guys want to go through? a committee of the whole with our corporate attorney here for any advice we might need on how to do that. Should we just reopen? I don't feel comfortable doing that. Um, what's the will of the board? Okay. I for one would simply say, Alan, I don't see the need for an attorney to advise us on that one. Uh, we closed it for a good reason when uh, either our governor or <laughs> Lori Lightfoot or somebody decides it's okay to open things wide open. I think we just start having meetings, but when uh, for the time being, I'm probably with the majority of older people, I don't have any interest in, nor do I have any need for a face-to-face -face meeting until uh, it's absolutely safe. And the only time it's that going to be, be absolutely fine. safe is... I just don't it. want... Um, and as far as I'm aware, school boards, library boards, I think park boards as well, are not having public meetings. Well, the schools Wait, are... Quite correct. The schools You're are correct. in Wilmette. It, which ones? Um, District 39 is in Wilmette. Yes. They are meeting. It, but it, and it was really bad <laughs> um, because they were, they were in person with a you know, finite number of people who could be in the room uh, and the sound for those who were in, you know, online was not up to, up to speed. So if we are going to reopen- our, bad. We maybe shouldn't do that. <laughs> we should wait until it's not real bad. And we can make our own real bad meetings. I don't know that we need to. Are we, um, is anyone um, attending the Ansel and Glick webinar that um, the township officials of Illinois is putting on about reopening townships? 
I am not planning on that. I don't know if if um, anyone else is planning on that. It appears they're, they're not having overwhelming attendance from New Trier um, at this point. Um, I just feel like we should probably, you know, check with them first before we um, have the attorney come in. That's fine. That's fine. I was just trying to figure out how to have ultimately the fewest problems long term. And if we we don't need them at this point, we can wait. They, they, we could always pay them. They come in later. They'll be thrilled. Um, Okay, um, there was an open question that Elliot had raised others as well on delivery of the of food by volunteers. And in that case, that would be like us, board members or anyone else who chose to. And I do have a letter that you can all not read uh, from our uh, township attorneys in conjunction with Torma, our insurance carrier, um, the township insurance carrier on a liability coverage for delivering stuff in a volunteer's car. And I will make sure that this letter is available for everybody. Alan, I did distribute it this afternoon. Ah, good. I wasn't did sure. Everyone, yeah, did everyone receive it? Anyway, we can't be delivering the food at this point. Um, and I know you, you had, uh, Elliot had offered uh, a different legal opinion until, I mean, given that they talked with our insurance carrier and other stuff, I would rather err on the side of caution. Alan, I, I did read the letter carefully. Good. And it did say that as far as workers' comp is concerned, no. coverage would apply and the law would not apply because they're volunteers. But as far as liability is concerned, if one of our volunteers were to get in an accident or be in, get in an accident, which is his or her fault, the insurance would apply. And in my opinion, it would be secondary to the individual's personal insurance. But I also read the letter carefully enough to know that both Torma and the attorney are kind of frowning on the idea. They want to err on the side of caution. But my query had two aspects to it. Number one, I wanted to find out if there was a need. If in other words, there were former clients who were saying the only reason we're not coming is because we're afraid and if it was delivered, it would be outstanding. Then the second issue was feasibility. It sounds like on the feasibility side, um, Torma and our attorney is frowning on it, but they're not prohibiting it, but they're suggesting that it might be risky. But the, the, the original question stands, and I guess it should be directed to Diane, because Brian isn't with us, and that is, have we talked to some of our regulars, or people who were regular pre-COVID, who for whatever reason are coming now, and have we inquired as to why they're not coming? I did see where Brian says, um, food pantry visits are picking up nicely. That makes sense. That's what we were all expecting to hear. It kind of kicked in a little bit late, but... You know, they're moving up from 25, 30 visits a week to 40, 45. That's the kind of numbers we'd expect in this kind of situation. But getting back to the original issue, have we at all inquired with those regulars who've ceased coming as to the reasons they're not coming? I believe Larisha had given some information, I think, to Gail and to, I'm not sure if she circulated it, that their list of reasons why. Um, when she spoke with the people and when she followed up with them were basically from their choice um, to say that they were not, they were afraid of the, I don't have my list here in front of me, so I can't repeat it, but I can certainly get that for you. But they were afraid as the pantry, uh, not the pantry, the, the virus, and they just weren't coming out. The transportation was one of the issues to come in. Um, they were, they had transportation like on a bus or whatever, but they were afraid of that as well. And um, I can pull that list again, uh, but she has contacted the people. And when you're looking at the increase, we're looking at visits of basically 769 since we've, uh, middle of March, since when all of this started. Uh, it's averaging about 51% uh, 
to 71 households uh, out of 137 households or registered uh, users, I should say. Um, we had discussed last time the 13 applications. Uh, six of those people have become a client and now the other seven are still not, are not joining. Uh, they have not interrogated or asked them why not. They've given them applications, they've reached out to them. And then when the person comes back, um, then they'll be on our list. And they also aren't showing up, those particular group is what Larisha indicated. But I can certainly have her pull that list again, Elliot. I think she had done that before for us. Hi. Uh, Diane. Uh, not Diane, I'm sorry, Gail. So um, I have put in the chat a copy of the email I received from Larisha, um, which was just a forward of the email um, that was sent to Diane and Brian and Jeannie. Um, so um, I don't consider any of those things necessarily a choice. Um, I think that the concept of choice um, here is a little lacking. Um, if someone has no ability to, you know, can't usually would take public transportation but that would be um, considered a high risk activity. I don't, I don't consider it a choice um, for them, a real choice to make their way to the, to the pantry. Um, similarly with the sicker shut-ins um, or those who lack transportation altogether. So um, I, I feel like we've brought this up at every meeting since March and it's, it's getting frustrating because I feel we're going around in circles. Um, I'm glad that we got this tour my email and I actually have not had a chance to review it because I only got it just now. Um, but it looks more like a coverage letter rather than a liability assessment. Um, and obviously we can't can't share that out. Um, but I'll, I will take a look at that. But I really wish that we were looking more for solutions rather than reasons why we can't help. Along that line, Gail, um, it did sound in what Diane relayed that two issues, afraid of the virus and <clears throat> transportation, are, sounds like those are the kind of people that would love to continue getting some service, um, but for their fear of coming. Um, and if we have a legitimate reason for liability concerns, um, I want to bring up again we have some wonderful partners that we work with, and there are two that come to mind, um, Meals at Home or, or, or Meals on Wheels, and secondly, the Volunteer Center. And what I'm wondering, given our relationship with those two clients, and in particular, Meals at Home, who we bumped up nicely, and the Volunteer Center um, asked for, uh, only got about 1,000 of the three or 4,000 additional that they asked for, but if you plug in one of those partners of ours and let them, do the work, that completely would eliminate any liability on our part. So in other words, if the volunteer center said, we've got so many volunteers looking for work during the pandemic, they'd be happy to use their cars to take your bags of food to these designated places, or if Meals on Wheels did that, I mean, that would completely eliminate any direct liability on the part of the township. And we just need to find out if one of those agencies might be willing to step in and service five, 10, 15 individuals if we determine that those individuals would be coming and really have a need for um, the bags of food and comestibles. And they're only not coming, they cease coming strictly because of transportation or- Okay. Uh, uh, and you had a comment, John? No, oh, no, I'm sorry. Uh, what I would suggest we do, and I, and I understand the frustration that this has been dragging on for a while, but what I'm not wanting to happen is end up with a liability case that'll bankrupt the township. It's not likely. I, I, I don't think it's likely at all. Uh, but I've unfortunately heard of this kind of stuff. And not being an attorney, you guys scared the hell out of me as to what could happen. Uh, what I would suggest we do is two things, and we could they could be done simultaneously. Uh, contact Meals on Wheels and the Volunteer Center, find out 
if they're willing to take this on and just do it, and then we're sort of done. And if you could help Diane, because any ambiguity on the part of asking the attorney for advice on the coverage and any confusion there, I'm sure is my fault because I don't know how to ask the question. I was just trying, what I was trying to find out from the attorney, can we, how, what do we have to do in order to do this? And the letter that you received is the product of those conversations. It's entirely probable that I didn't ask the question right. Uh, so if you could jot it down so that Diane could raise that question with the attorneys, we'll have an answer at this point pretty quickly. Uh, and then we'll just go from there. If they say it's fine, we'll, we'll do it. If one of the other vendors say they're willing to do it and the attorney says it's okay, we could move forward. And Stefan, your hand was up. Because Dale, the one, you. Yeah. Can you the one thing we haven't feedback? done yet, the, the one thing we haven't done yet, and we wisely haven't done it, is we haven't gone to the step of actually asking those former clients whether or not they would be appreciative of or need or like if we could deliver. Because we held off on asking those questions to those former clients until we knew we had a means to make good on. I don't want to ask them until we know we could deliver if they said yes. Yes. But I think that Lou wrote a very nice letter in response to your query, but it was mostly from the workers' compensation or the first party um, analysis. It wasn't a third party liability analysis. And people all over this country are used to automobiles to deliver food to people. I mean, it's widespread, it's rampant during the pandemic. And the primary coverage is for their own personal automobile. And then the township's coverage would be secondary or um, would be a second layer or an umbrella, if you will, to the individual's coverage. But again, um, volunteerism, you know, is I'm going to use my car to complete this task. And it's going on. Millions of people do it every day. And every now and then something happens. And then, you know, we have to know what, what the ramifications are. And I think we kind of know what they are. I see Torma generally frowning on volunteer activities by township off the premises. They like us to limit it to what's on the premises. That's a, you know, that's a reasonable corporate guidance that they're giving us. But if we can substitute in one of our partners, like either Meals or Volunteer Center, we completely eliminate any liability concerns whatsoever. So if one of those partners is willing to do it, then we go to the next step and ask our clients who are not attending, would you be interested? Would this make a difference in your life if we did it, if we provided it? And if the answer is yes, then I agree with Gail, it would be a, a noble thing for us to expand into. I, I'm, I'm reading the, 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 the thing you put up, Gail. I don't know, I'm not sure what it's called. That, Whatever this thing. For reasons. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so you're yeah. saying that people have said that that they're not coming because of all these other reasons that it wouldn't make any difference. I'm not quite sure. When you called all these people, that they want us to be delivering or not? I mean, that's. Oh, um. Just to be clear, this is from Larisha. Oh, oh, because it says... It's in quotation marks. Oh, what, whatever. I thought it said your name on top. Whatever. I have a few comments if I could. Yeah. First of all, I think that somebody did approach the, the Meals on Wheel, and they weren't particularly interested in doing this. I also read the letter today, and I got the sense, Elliot, that they knew exactly what the question was. They didn't want to give a direct answer on the question. And so they skirted the question. So I think they know exactly what we're asking them. They don't want to be the ones to say yay or nay, one way or the other. The other thing, Elliot, as you know, and you do more liability work than I do, but if the township is involved in any way with the delivery of this food, the, the vertical liability would exist to the extent that we are involved in this, whether we are 
directly delivering the food or not. So I don't agree that we get away from the liability issue if in fact we are not the ones delivering the food. And my third comment is, I wanna be noble, I wanna do right by our constituents, but I'm not inclined to allow us to deliver food. That's my position. But clearly, Stefan, I tend to, I've been nervous about this, which is why I called the lawyer in the first place. I know that, Alan. Uh, I don't know what, as Stefan says, I certainly, if we can get people food, I'd like to get them food, but not at the expense of bankrupting the township or creating all kinds of other problems. For what it's worth, if somebody were to get sick on the food that they procured from our pantry, we'd be in the chain, the potential chain. <clears throat> yep. We, we provided it. Did we safe keep it? Did we inspect it for freshness? Did we refrigerate it properly? Did we store it properly? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, operating do, a food pantry is not good. without risk. We do. We we don't take stuff that's out of date or any of that stuff. You're in the chain of distribution, so there is potential liability. Um, operating a food pantry is without risk. Um, there's all kinds of um, ways that we can mitigate risk or eliminate risk, but the more of that that we focus on, the less services we provide. Uh, this is really a desperate, unprecedented time, and I would hate to think there are people that really depended on what we did for them before the pandemic, and now they're without, and I don't know what they're doing. If we find out that they found substitution, a uh, substitute options, better options or comparable options, that would be wonderful, but um, I just would feel real bad if a regular client really depended on us, appreciated what we did for them, and now can't avail himself or herself or their family simply because they have no way of, of getting the, the bag in a manner they consider safe. I'm not aware of that being the case. That doesn't mean that there isn't someone like that, but I have not been made aware of anyone not using our services for, for the list of reasons you, you've uh, described. Let me add something to what Stefan said. <clears throat> Park districts all over the state uh, depend on an operation called Paderma, Park District Risk Management Association. With the exception of the Chicago Park District, they're all self-insured for all sorts of things. The Park District Risk Management Association simply said this, anytime you have your fingerprints on something, watch out because if there's trouble, they're gonna come after you because you got deep pockets. So when Stefan says, make any difference whole variety of reasons why not if we get into trouble uh if somebody gets into trouble on this food pantry and we're delivering food uh we've got our fingerprints on it they're going to go after us because we got the deep pockets my view is i'd like to find a way to service these people but i don't think we should get in the food delivery business Okay, so we are kind of where we started. Um, a couple of options would be to come up with a very, a much clearer question for the attorneys than I raised and ask them yes or no, or um, stay out of the delivery business. Um, Alan, Alan, just a, a thought on that, Alan. Lawyers do not make decisions for clients. Clients make decisions for clients. Lawyers give options. So they're not going to give you a definitive answer, yes or no. That's not their job. At least that's not lawyers that I know. So I think that the question was well-framed. I think they knew exactly what the question was. They did not want to come down with a yes or no answer. I think it comes down to that simple equation. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so the way I read it was sort of the way uh, Elliot said, they, they don't want us to be doing it. That's how I read it. Uh, now, I, I'm sure there are legal hairs that were split and they're saying, you could do it, but we don't want you. I, I don't know. I read it that they would really like us not to be doing that. My and other the, last comment is, we're six months into this and 
if people haven't made arrangements by now, it's kind of a bit late in the game, if you will. And my best guess is people have made arrangements because they aren't coming to the food pantry. And I would venture to guess, based on people I've talked to, that more people are afraid of the illness than anything. People that aren't leaving their houses are afraid that they're going to get ill, period. It's not a function of they don't have the transportation. It's the function of they do not want to leave their homes during the pandemics. I have plenty of friends who do Peapod or whatever other organizations are out there on a daily basis so they don't have to leave their home. And I think that that's the phenomenon we're experiencing. It's not just because they can't get to the township. I mean, if they're really desperate, they could hire a Uber or a cab or some form of transportation to get to the township on their behalf. But again, I, I I'm really feel pretty strongly about this one. I don't think the township belongs in the delivery business, nor do I think the township should be in the delivery business. That's how I feel about it. Uh, would somebody like to call the question on whether we should be delivering or not? And we can move on. Is there a question? No, but there could be if we make one. I think the opinions are pretty well known at this point. I'm not sure we need to have a motion on it. Do you want me to try to frame a, Stefan and Alan, I direct this question to you two in particular. Do you want me to try to frame a very concise issue to try to get Lou to render a legal opinion, yay or nay? I think I can do that. We can ask him, do you believe that we should attempt to expand our existing services into delivery, either by directly using our own volunteers or by using an intermediary? I mean, I could draft a simple question, and then if he should say no, weighing everything, I don't advise it, then the issue is to bed. But if he should say, you can do it, you're covered, be careful, then it's still in play. I mean, I'll only draft that, that question if you guys want me to. Elliot, again, I'm gonna say it for the third or fourth time. They know exactly what we're asking them. They do not wanna give us a dis an opinion because that's not their job. I would tend to side with Stefan on this. Yeah. Uh, you would know what attorneys think their job is. I know, <laughs> but Stefan, you have clients who talk to you about things and then you have clients who ask you to commit to an opinion. And when they ask you to commit to an opinion, we readily do that. And sometimes that puts things to rest. They don't always follow our advice. Yeah, but Elliot, by virtue of the language, and I don't want to get belabored on this, rendering an opinion is not a decision. I, it, the, the client well, makes it, a decision. It, it was all about workers' comp. It was all about first party liability and it had nothing to do with liability. But again, yeah, that, but, but Elliot, they if gave I examples. The ruling is as the supervisor, I would say we're, I, we're not in the delivery business and we move on. Now, if somebody would like to change that, uh, we could vote on that. Otherwise, I suggest we just move on. And if anyone wants to examine this with more information at some point in the future, we could take another half hour, 40 minutes and talk about it. Yeah. At, at this point, I do not have any motion. Okay. Then I suggest we move on. And if it comes up again, we'll deal with it. Yeah. Sort of. Hey, I'll deal with it like we've done so far. Okay, so what's the next item on the virtual agenda? peer jury? Yeah, that was. Um, I think Gail raised that as a question. I did. I would like um, to move that we um, have virtual peer jury during this school year. I think before we do that, we would need to talk with the police departments that kind of do this for us. I I would, uh, is there a second? If we may, I would defer to Brian, who says after giving it careful consideration, he concluded peer jury is not really workable via Zoom. So I'm where Brian is. I, I don't know 
how you do it properly. Uh, Elliot's got a lot of experience with it, but Brian says no. So I'm um, with Brian, only because he knows what's going on in Pierre Gerian as for Point of order. Years. Is there a second on my motion? A second, Gail. Thank you. Um, so that part of the reason why I'm bringing this up is because of Brian's report, um, which for the public is on our website and the board materials, um, that he did say that he had considered it. I had been in communication with him for some time about this. Um, and I am I'm not satisfied um, that there was careful consideration. Um, I need more um, because court is going on in via Zoom. I'm currently representing under um, juvenile um, clients in Zoom hearings. So I don't know why you know Cook County can do it, but we're we can't do it. Um, and so I'm, I'm frustrated that I don't think that we are giving it due thought and we are not giving it a co the consideration that it deserves. I would, I would agree with Gail. Um, I'm working through Zoom hearings in the courthouse a couple times a week and it's not perfect, but it's pretty good. And it seems to be working. Although I would pick up on Alan's comment. I think it's something that the police department should weigh in on. Absolutely. They're the ones that have this is a practical matter of how we deal with the cases. Uh, without the cooperation of the police departments, we're out of business. Right. No, I agree. You should talk to the police department. And the other thing is, on, if if they're okay with it, fine with me. Uh, well, there are some technical matters, Alan. It, to get a, a Zoom hearing set up, there has to be a fair amount of high level technical knowledge because in the court systems right now, they're setting up holding rooms and there's somebody coordinating the whole process in the background. The judges are just there judging the cases, but they have administrative assistants who are actually doing the legwork of setting these Zoom meetings up, putting people into holding boxes, bringing them out of the holding box when it's appropriate. And more important. Hmm? This may be why Brian's opinion is even more important. He's the guy who's going to be in the holding of all the criteria that Stefan just laid out. Absolutely, and I, I'm, sh I'm sure that with the proper training that he'd be able to, to do that. All I would say is that I'm doing some hearings too, like Gal and Gail, but we have a lot more moving parts here. We have the offender and his parent, we have the jurors, and they're going to be, all be in remote locations. We have the youth advocate. We have the administrator, which is Brian, and we have the reporting officer. So cons there are more moving parts to have a successful peer jury hearing than there would be for what the three of us are doing in court right now. Secondly, the thing that maybe made uh, the biggest impression on me is Brian says that our agencies where we place the offenders to do their community service are not accepting. The best, all of them, almost all of them, if not all of them are not accepting um, anybody to come in and do that kind of work. So the question is, if we could figure out a way to separate and to educate and to come up with a punishment, we'd have no way of carrying out the punishment, fulfilling the community service hours, and on checking with the agency to see if in fact the hours were fulfilled in a manner, and that, that's a pretty important aspect to the program. There has to be a way to do the community service. And it sounds from Brian like there isn't at the present time. Well, that is an interesting point. Um, I don't think we have to be as, um, as we, we don't have to limit ourselves to consequences that only involve volunteer service. Um, I was involved in a court diversion program in Champaign that um, assigned juveniles to um, babysitting classes with the Red Cross, for instance, um, depending or other types of, of coursework. Um, so, I mean, there are options um, and I'd hate to see kids who could have gone through a rehabilitative process being pushed into something more confrontational. This may be a, again, non-attorney opinion here that if our system isn't broken and it seems to be working reasonably well, why should we mess with it? I, I don't know. Um, 
in keeping it going the way it has been. And it's not going. We've, yeah. we've suspended yeah. it. So those offenders who would have been directed to peer jury are likely being directed to juvenile court if directed anywhere at all. So the families that love the peer jury option when one of their youth got in trouble really no longer have that option for recent offenses. So e even though there are a lot more moving parts, I do think if there's a will, there's a way. But the question still becomes we have to be able to carry out you know, a, a punishment. And that punishment traditionally since the beginning of the peer jury program has been the performing of community service. Occasionally there are requirements of a research paper, um, a requirement of apology letters, a requirement of restitution. 99% of what we do is we give community service hours to offenders. And if there's nowhere for them to fulfill those hours, I mean, that does kind of make things challenging and difficult. But I, I agree with Gail and Alan in this, Gail and Stefan in the sense that um, we'd like to maybe invite Brian to the next meeting and talk to him in a little bit more detail or somehow, you know, make sure that he's considered all the options. But right now, Brian's really, you know, is, it hasn't come up to the learning. Right now, it doesn't sound like we have a good Zoom system set up upstairs yet. We're still in the program. No, we do not yet. Right, so that is definitely number one. So why don't we do this? Um, I would move to table my motion to the next meeting, but I would ask um, if, if Alan, if you can ask um, Brian to, pr to present a more fulsome report of what, um, what he's considered and why he does not think those particular um, venues will work for this program. Uh, hang on, Diane? Yes, I'm taking, I'm taking notes, Alan. Oh, you're good. I appreciate that. Uh, would you send one of those notes to Brian? Yes, so I sure will. And I'd also like to just, with him also. All right. I'd just like to comment on uh, the, the first yep. and foremost, Gail, that you said about the Zoom machine. We do have that, and that has been ordered, and we are getting that set up. So that is yeah, yeah, it's what I said before. It's but it's not there. Yeah, that's just that's just the technology part of it. Right. Uh, well, and just to reiterate, the plan the, like it's there and it's not. Yeah. And just to, to emphasize, um, both for, for Brian and for the public, that the reason why you know I feel strongly about this is because it's such an important program. Brian started it and is helped numerous people, and I want to continue um, to see that program thrive even in this difficult time. If we can. My feeling is if we can, without uh, reinventing the wheel, then we should. Um, I don't know that we can. You guys, you know, Stefan and Gail, and I think Elliot, you guys deal with these kind of cases and stuff all the time. I, the rest of us don't do that. The whole and world we, is changing. So I understand well, this is new for us. It was new for Cook County. No question about that. And I'm getting closer to where Stefan has been in terms of the KG world. I'm having trouble with it. We deal with it, but with fewer moving parts than would be required to carry out the traditional peer jury. I will right, we'll follow Gail's uh, suggestion. We'll, we'll check with Brian. We'll see what we come up with. And in our next meeting, we'll, we'll see where we are. And I officially move to table the motion to the next meeting. Good. Thank you. Can I have a second? Well, that second. You don't need one. Okay. For a tabling, yes. No, no, if you're withdrawing the motion. I'm not withdrawing the motion, the motion though. No, listen to me, please. Mm -hmm. If you're withdrawing consideration of the motion tonight and wish to move it to next week, that's fine. You don't need a second for that. Because we didn't vote on the motion in the first place. It's something you put on the table so you can take it off and put it back on the table. Yeah, that's not my which, you're, which is what you're doing next week, next month. Next. Okay. 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 Then that's what we'll we'll bring it up in any event, whatever. Yeah. All right. So where are we? Yeah. Uh, uh, All right. So. I've assumed, and I want to make sure it wasn't an inaccurate assumption, that we're going to bypass 
the committee of the whole meeting coming up. So we would move beyond that at, on the agenda at this point. Uh, and now we're at um, the clerk's report. Well, we are indeed in unprecedented times and it's affected everything from the two items that I'm gonna suggest to you. So uh, you remember before you approve the agenda, Jack and I had spent tons of time preparing, excited. We really had a, a spectacular one planned, but with everything, and then with the states, um, with the governor's executive orders on uh, postponing and stopping everything, um, it's still kind of in a state of confusion because the order says that the annual town meeting must be held the third Tuesday following the governor's rescinding of the state of emergency order. So when that expires, who knows when. Then tonight, uh, Niles was holding their annual meeting. So Alan, I, I'm gonna explain to you how. I don't know. I, no, 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 you're right, you're exactly right. But I mean, they were doing it. Whether yeah. they wanted to play with all the bells and whistles, I don't know. You're exactly right, Alan. So, but we I only just, had four or five people there. So it wasn't like it was a big deal. Well, Hanover did it in person and had 11 people, but I, I want to give you a little more. Actually, just so you're all aware, like what am, what am I talking about? So with that in mind, we really don't have to do it until this disaster has been declared over. And uh, But they also gave you a choice. You could have it as early as July 21st. So certain townships like Hanover did an actual in-person, socially distanced, mass in-person uh, meeting. And then tonight, Niles Township is holding a virtual one. So I've looked all well, over. Well, they had people there, and because they spent a, a, a whole bunch of time talking about masks at the meeting. Uh, I stopped watching at that point. So, I, I, Alan, I'm looking forward to looking at the recording of that meeting and then talking to their clerk, Chuck Levy, about All I'm saying is that I've been all over this and with Toy, and basically, we can do what, unless we had it in July or even now, if you do an in-person, you need permission from the county health department. So then we still could do an in-person, but I think it's very clear from our initial conversations, that's not gonna work. So with virtual, uh, we could do it with Zoom and have plenty of capability. And that's why I'm suggesting you tonight. Now the date has nothing. It's just that the week after is the day after uh, Yom Kippur or Rosh Hashanah, and then the week, so there, it seems like there's a problem. Furthermore, if we do it one month on September 15th, we don't have the appropriate window for posting that they expect that you're a full month in order to put that on the website and, uh, and to publish it. So um, I picked the 22nd for a virtual meeting. And if you'll notice, Jack posted it in the, in the comments section. I did send you as an email. And I just wanted you to know, it's literally the same, but just condensed a little bit. And in, in fact, even in the, uh, the awards, we, we accomplished the one with Max Rosen already, and we had a nice ceremony for him, but we'd like him to zoom in with us and then read his essay online. And then for the other ones, uh, we'll honor Alan and- um, Oh, that's important. But, but what we could do is we could just acknowledge the awards yeah, yeah, we already have the plaques ordered. Well, all right, well, you're in charge, Jerome. The, the clerk, it says the clerk decides all this stuff, so. But I do want it to be a date that will be favorable for all of you. You don't have to, you know, remember, there's no obligation to attend. Uh, the only, the biggest challenge for me on this one is the fact that we did have properly submitted prior to the deadline uh, a citizen question. And so in all fairness to them, I don't think it's fair. That was part of why, if any of you were wondering, why didn't I just decide this right away and do it? Because I wanted to wait and thinking maybe we could have an in-person meeting. And I did ask Clerk Levy and he said, you have to be really careful then anyone who, so Sandy and I probably, and probably Jack, will be looking to see, are they a registered voter in Cook County? Because you don't want- Well, you, you like, let us know what it is that so you- what I'd like to, Excellent, okay, so Alan, I'd like to propose that September 27th, and if you see the, uh oh, John, is there a problem with it? Because I see you shaking your head, it's, it's September- yeah, He's ready to move on, I think. Okay, just- okay. September 27th? Jack, uh, John, that it's an important event, but we should get it done. 
Okay. September 22nd or 27th? Be the 22nd. Tuesday. Okay. The 22nd. And what time, Trump? What well, to propose approval of because you have to approve their amended agenda. I, I, it's just you have to do it that way. And I cleared it with, with another clerk about you said you have to vote as a board. Levy, you said you approved it with? All right. If, no, if you have any really orthodox Jewish people, they you. might have a problem with that day. I'm perfect. But that, 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 that's later. The 22nd is a week before. What yeah, time is it? It's in the days. Of course, on the 28th. If we did it the 29th, don't you think some people, if you're, but it would be a seven. I'm okay with the day. When, you're, when you start dealing with religious items, especially Jewish religious items, uh, there can be an inordinate number of opinions. It would not be my opinion that we have a problem. Okay. It might be to some. I, I, as far as I'm concerned, we can go ahead. The 22nd would give us enough time. Even if we had a board meeting scheduled after or before, it would be no, no issue. It's just that it's All right, we'll just go ahead and if somebody- But I need, Jerome, a, I need a recommendation. Up, um, Jerome, yes. I, agree with, I agree with Alan because what you're not understanding is mm -hmm. that from Rosh Hashanah to Yom Kippur, that entire week is considered a religious holiday. Exactly. It's not two nights of Rosh Hashanah and one night of Yom That's Kippur. It's eight days of holidays. So in that respect, you are scheduling it on a Jewish holiday. That's so I would I defer to Alan on that. And I would agree with him. My other question is, what time are you considering it? 7.30, because that's what we've always had a schedule. It has to be- 7.30? 7.30. It has to be after- dawn or dusk or something I don't know. after six hey i want a board to to be clear i just picked the 22nd because that was the first available tuesday with official public notice all right fine well, as far as i'm okay with the day after I so maybe want to raise that issue if anyone i would push it over a week i would october october 6th no, September 29th, you said oh, was available. But that's the day after. Um, Doesn't matter. Once it's over, it's over. <laughs> yeah. Over Seriously, it's Jerome. Over it, it's better, <laughs> Jerome, it's better to do it the day after because it's not there any longer yeah. than during the week of. That's my yeah. sense uh, of it. Sounds great. Over I'm so glad good. you contributed to that because then you're going to save us getting calls. From people. So the yeah, over is good. So <clears throat> the 27th, would you like October or is it 27th? No, 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 no. Let, let's get this done. Okay. So it's been amended to we say- we got enough stuff hanging here that we're- 29th. All right. I'm waiting for- a, a, Thank a, you. A motion. Uh, do we need to- No, you, you're the clerk. You said- no, It is my- Alan, But we make the motion. Meeting, actually, I'm the only official standing. However, it has <laughs> to be approved by the board, and since you've already approved a previous date that with the coronavirus was switched, I need one of you to just say yes, and somebody else to say second, and then vote. There's nobody else to say it, we're all here. But yeah, John. Yes. Oh, you're voting, all right. The, second. <laughs> there's a second. Thank you made the motion, all in favor. Aye. Hey. Your roll call on this? Oh, yeah, roll call, yep. Yeah. Oh, sure, why not? Okay, okay. Mr. Clark. It's moved. It's moved by Trustee Thomas, seconded by Trustee Eisenberg. Supervisor Goldberg. Yep. Trustee Thomas. Yes. Trustee Moser. Yes. Trustee Robbins. Yes. Trustee Eisenberg. Yes. Well, we'll see you on the 29th. I hope you'll be able to make uh, it. It'll oh. be wonderful. Jack, I've got to post this. I got to speak to you about getting this already. And Diane, I want to, I, I have to publish it. I just want to follow the legality. So we'll be done. It's going to be very short. Uh, short it'll be and, wonderful. Uh, it'll be fine. Uh, um, Okay, and then uh, the second. Madam Assessor, a report or not? Uh, the Jerome's report not done. is we Wait, have heard absolutely Jerome's nothing not done. from the county. He's and not, they both Jerome's the not finished. So I'm, no, that's it. Well, thank Go you. On. Back to Jerome. Uh -huh. Okay. Uh, oh, no, uh, Alan. I, I was Jerome at, is not done. I was asking, uh, investigating uh, okay. what other. So you probably know that the county offices are, are just 
not open. You can get a uh, marriage license, but nothing else special, no online. So this is the largest county thing. And by the way, the recorder of deeds is being absorbed in the county clerk's office. So it's gargantuan and it's at a complete standstill. So we have no guidance from the new clerk here in Yarborough. We have really no idea what to do. There's been no communication about the budget ordinance, but I was advised by Hanover Township Clerk who actually has filed it online. She yeah. suggested that we put that on our agenda such that we can pass and then because it has to be on the agenda and then if we approve it, just to get it in there. She feels like, of course, there'd be no consequence to just waiting, but you don't want it to butt up against the levy, et cetera. So I'm just suggesting that if this board is interested in just nailing that down and getting it done, you can do so because okay. we can. Okay, that's it. All right, we'll put it on at the next available opportunity. Okay. I'm, I'm kind of confused though, because I did ask to, for it to be on today's agenda. Um, and just wanted to know what, what the plan is for that. On, on, so, the, on which, on the budget? I had asked that the budget be considered tonight when we were asking for things so we should be discussing today. Uh, um, uh, what happened clearly is we screwed up. So I will take responsibility for it. I wasn't aware of it, but if it's not there, somebody has to take responsibility. I will, I'm sorry, and we'll deal with it at the next meeting. And, and I apologize because I, we're gonna be here all night otherwise. We're not prepared to do a budget ordinance tonight. Okay. I, it's, it just wouldn't happen. We talk about it a lot and put it off till then anyway. Oh, good. Um, we do have a item on the agenda for our emerging emergency response to pandemic. I'm not quite sure what that is. We're, our everyday existence is an emergency uh, response to the pandemic. It's kind of what we've been talking about all night. Is the somebody, whoever put this on, is there a specific thing you wanted to deal with? I think that's a layover. I think we covered it all in the supervisor's report. Okay, fine. So we're, we're done with that. Uh, we have uh, the opportunity to approve the consent agenda. Is there a motion to do so? I move oh. that we approve the consent agenda, community services, communications director, social services, as given in the reports that I think we all got, I certainly did. Uh, is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Uh, first, any discussion, then if not, yeah, John. Oh, you were voting in favor. No, discussion. <laughs> raising your hand, all right. Okay. So, Alan, discussion? Yeah, now there's discussion. Um, so it was brought to my attention that we may not be using consent agenda as it is normally used, um, that it's more just a report to the board, which would not require our consent. Um, it's more for our information, um, but rather if they had been asking for particular you know, administrative costs, things like that, that might've been appropriate for a consent agenda or you know, wishing somebody happy birthday. Um, when this came up originally, our, I believe it was Collector Pell, um, suggested that would be a way to deal with these three reports as a group. Uh, if you don't want to, we could deal with it individually or we could just, as you just said, if there's no issue, leave it alone. So. Technically, Gail's correct because they're not recommending recommend anything. On the flip side, as you just said, Alan, these are reports that we at the board have been given. Uh, this is not technically a consent that we're giving. What we're doing is acknowledging that we got the reports and read them. So call it consent agenda, call it anything else, but it's the staff reports that we're acknowledging. Okay. So all in favor of approving the 
staff reports. I think it's, it's good for us to acknowledge that we received these things and that we're moving forward. Yep. And if calling it a consent agenda is a problem, we'll call it. No. I say um, in the future, I would ask that these reports be placed under the supervisor's report. That's fine. Um, yes. And, you know, okay. any kind of oversight can be, can be discussed there. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. So long as people have the opportunity to talk about it. Uh, so we half asked voted just now. Are, <laughs> are, are we okay to move on with uh, this agenda? I just wanted to point out for everybody that um, in in Jean's report, she mentions that the child care um, scholarships um, deadline is extended. Um, obviously, a very important um, deadline, um, and I'm very glad that we are doing that um, because obviously the districts are changing their plan every moment, right. and only just today did Wilmet Park District come out with their plan um, to address right. District 39's changed plan. We're so I appreciate that. To keep up with the school districts. It's difficult. Absolutely. Um, and we're so trying to stay abreast of what they're doing. Yes. Because we're funding them and all that for this program, but we have nothing to say about it. So it's an interesting exercise. Sort of like, I don't know, consent agenda, I guess. <laughs> but, uh, Diane, do you have a con do you have a sense of if we're seeing increased um, applications as of late? Or for for the child care scholarships? Uh, we she, she and I talk about that. She is still waiting for people to weigh in that, with that as she's doing with the target cards because of yeah 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 that. target cards that's for sure. target cards and um, for also for the summer camp and for the before and after school and all these things. We talk about that daily because the consideration water trying to stay abreast with correct. what the actual programs end up being. Correct. And to accommodate, and I need to comment that the people are very, very pleased and gracious that we are doing this no, because we're going to um, extensions that are, you know, her concern when we were talking about it was that, you know, this isn't what we do. And I said, what you need to tell them is we are doing this in response to all that is going on. And they're most, most gracious for that. Yeah, and I would point out that while all of our uh, respondents from the school districts and the park districts and other places may or may not be aware of what we're doing, like we were talking about delivering food, doing all of that stuff, wherever it's humanly possible, we're bending over backwards to make sure that services are delivered. Um, Correct. And sometimes we can keep track of it, and sometimes it's a moving target that's real hard to keep track of. But we're keep trying to keep in mind that our goal is to provide the service wherever humanly possible. So having... I've got a question for Diane. It's a very simple one. We've gone to this new check system. Uh, I don't know if it's in our bylaws or uh, if there's some sort of rule, but any check over X, 500 or 1,000, is supposed to be approved by a trustee. And f prior to COVID, uh, Alan and I would be in that office every other week or so and approve the larger checks. That ain't happening anymore. So Diane, is that something that we're missing out on or is that okay not to approve them? We are doing this in order to function and we've been doing that since the COVID took place to accommodate and keep the business rolling and moving as we- um, And I am verbally yeah. approving- Correct. Some of the checks and I have a stamp that's locked up in the safe. Right. It's being used for, for this purpose. Right. Um, and if we ever, God willing, get back to some semblance of normalcy, I'd love to go back to meeting with John once a month and sign the checks. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I... All right. Uh, 
Director Kai. Yes. You're next on the agenda. I see that. Um, the reports that I sent this afternoon, as John noted, um, are the June year to date reports. Um, I'm not going to go line by line by line. We will be here for a very long time, but I'd like to just give an overview of what we have and then also to focus on the discussion that Jerome had regarding the budget that we will be putting on and approving, if that's what I'm understanding Jerome correctly. Um, the budget, the FY 2021 budget, uh, I've been functioning under and working as a working document as I noted here is the, it's a working document pending the submission is based upon last year's um, year end budget um, allocations. If you recall, we had several, several transfers for a couple of items. Um, there have been, I've made some additional changes based on the dollars that we're looking at as we move through this time. Um, with the pandemic and with the with the amount of um, checks that we're writing and I think John to your point um, what I could do is um, circulate and to everyone the check registers uh, which might be I think a helpful item what I have here is the two-page report that um, I'm assuming everyone is very familiar with this just gives us a point of reference where we began on at the end of uh, February on February 29th, which we then carried over. Uh, also noting that we did experience uh, a not as large of a, a reduction in funds that we had anticipated because the dollars for the levies did come in. Uh, on the two page report, the top line represents where we were at the end of February as we moved into the new fiscal year. Um, noting here the activity for both the town fund on page one and the GA on page two. I think most importantly to look at the four page report will give you by line item uh, where we are as of this point in time, or as of June, now that the rest of the July reports have come in uh, for the four month period, uh, noting that we have issued the first of the three uh, payments for the uh, community support, our community support grants, pardon me, the agency grants uh, noted on the first page, we're sitting at the 33%. Um, the revenues represent a the, the levy that was approved back in December and also uh, an, itemization, an itemization of the different revenue sources, noting that we've reduced uh, items such as interest and reduced interest or items such as passport. Whether or not we'll realize those dollars remains to be seen. Um, moving on to the other areas, what I usually do is just go through and highlight the different items uh, based on the budget that has is sitting here that's pending uh, submission and now approval on the next uh, board meeting. Um, you can see there and it demonstrates where all the do different dollars are and the percentages. We're pretty much on target. Some of them go up a little bit more. You'll notice that summer camp scholarships, but that basically has been closed out. Um, moving on to page three. Just noting the different the different percentages, uh, all the staff salaries, the social security, and all those those dollars have been posted, uh, and we're sitting at pretty much um, where we should be. I would like to suggest though that when we're looking at these items, and if there's any feedback on these, specifically for the township or anything, you let me know before we prepare the ordinance um, for the next meeting or any questions. General assistance, uh, we are looking at a, t a very large increase in the emergency assistance as Jean has noted in, um, on many occasions. Uh, so we've increased that amount. We've left the home relief at the same level, um, anticipating that should something come up and we do need those funds for that or there are people that will need the home relief, we'll have them. The overall budget, we're looking at is a 
total of revenues for the 3,132,000 plus with expenses of the 3.6 million, giving us a projected 554,000 uh, reduction in revenues. But noting that they, we were in that same area or arena, if you will, when we had last year's budget, I'm just pulling up my information. We were projecting or budgeting for better yet for 522,000 plus for a reduction. Uh, but we really ended up in a posit positive to the extent the reduction for town fund was a lot less than we anticipated and we re we experienced uh, additional funds for the general assistance. So this is just a very quick recap of that. I would ask that if you look at the line items and let me know if there's any changes, suggestions or whatever, because if we're going to prepare this document that needs approval, Jerome will submit, um, I'll need to have that before we finalize that report. <clears throat> okay, thank you. Are there any questions of Diane? Good. Uh, do we vote to approve this or? I don't, um, I don't think so. Okay. I'm sorry, I did have a question. I was, I'm, I'm sorry for the late response. Um, I could not find this on our website. Am, am I looking on the wrong spot? I got it off of my email, but um, I, the spot that looks like it should be in there is not updated. It's not there because this is not an approved budget. It's a pending submission and approval of the board. What about the financial reports? I thought we were putting those up. This is part of the finance. That's a very much a basis for the financial reports. Once we get this, then those we put up. Okay, so we have them all ready to put. Well, this these are they, but it'll have then an approved budget as opposed to a working document pending submission. Okay. Um, so that's where we are at this point. Uh, we don't have old business anymore. What would what we call it, John? You're you're mute. I'm sorry, John. I'm sorry. If I had the minutes of last month's meeting, I'd remember what we called it. Oh, whatever John called it last month, and it's on here. Jerome, come on. Old business. Um, do we have any of that? Yes, I, want, I wanted to ask. I wanted to ask Jack huh. how Bernie's book drive went. I never heard an update on that. Thank you. Uh, it was incredible. Uh, in four hours, we collected 16,500 books. Oh, my goodness. Was, uh, no incidents, very well uh, managed. Uh, Bernie's did a great job. Uh, the people from the church couldn't have been more gracious. And Gail, thank you for uh, coming out and spending a couple hours uh, out in that heat that we had that day. Uh, so it was very well received. And in fact, uh, I talked with Carol Collier last Friday, and we are now trying to see if it might be possible to uh, pull together one more drive in October. Uh, we're currently looking, uh, I reached out to the village of Glencoe to see if they might be able to help us. We would also like to look at possibly some churches or synagogues uh, that might allow us to do uh, something in a parking lot, but it worked out very well and we were very pleased. Thank you, Jack. Okay. Thank you. And thanks. All right. Uh, before we move on to, well, is there any new business? Okay, before we said- I'm sorry, do we have an update on um, electronic donations? Like, on, on, I'm sorry, on what? On the electronic donations button. Oh, there is something, uh, Diane? I, the electronic donations bu button is completed and they are trying to get this to uh, work on the website. Glad to hear. Well, we'll try. Uh, Yay. The stuff with the electronics, like with the uh, improved 
uh, capacity and we're, we're working on all that stuff it just it, it, as soon as right, as soon as that's um active i will of course let everyone know as i don't and part of the rest. problem is we don't have anybody who understands what all this stuff is so we'll try and explain it as best we can to the group but it's we're assured that everything is working toward completion. Uh, before we go on to uh, setting the next meeting date, uh, I want to uh, thank you guys for cooperation. I'm going through some health issues that are uh, new experiences. That's the best way to put it. And I'm, I'm doing the best I can, and I appreciate the cooperation that you guys on the board have offered, and especially the staff, that they've been terrific. No one more than Diane, uh, because I, I annoy the hell out of her at least two or three times a day. Um, and I do appreciate the cooperation. Okay, having done the last apology I'm ever doing, <laughs> Thank you, Alan. Um, <laughs> how does the 15th of September look for a board meeting? And if that's not right, somebody else suggest a different date. Would it make sense to make it on the same date as the annual? I don't know how long that's going to be. That's fine. Uh, that, Jerome? Jerome? Yeah, Jerome. he raised the thumb. So I think we're okay. So okay. that's what it will be. I saw a whole hand go up for Jan. <laughs> uh, <well. laughs> My nose is cold. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, okay, so we've set the adjourn uh, uh, the next meeting date. Now a motion for adjournment would be entertained. John, we adjourn. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Thank you. All in favor? Bye. Bye. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're adjourned and thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night.